Hi, Bonjour. All right, everybody who's jumping on. So what we're doing here today is a sheep sharing event where we're going to take these five, four mamas and one spike, and we're going to shear them. It's something that we do every year, something that is needed, essential animal care for them. And if you guys have any questions throughout the event, just leave them in the comment section and we will have a Q&A section afterwards. So let's get started. Is Spike going first? Spike's going first. Trinidad and Tobago. No way! Yeah, Spike going first. Hello from everybody out of state and out of country. So Spike is going first. He is one of our nicest sheep.
Well done. Look at that. And a pedicure, all at the same time. All right, there we go. So one sheep down, we're gonna take Spike back in and bring out another one. You can see all of the wool here. And Kirk is gonna take it and put it all back in here in a bag and wait. You can hear everybody else. Hello to Mrs. McCarthy's third grade class in Hershey. We miss you guys. They're online, yeah. Hi, Elaine. Hi, Gary. And all the wool is put right back in that bag. Kirk, how much does that weigh? And how much money will you get for that? Uh, it's not worth very much now, probably 20 cents a pound. 20 cents a pound. And he thinks that there's about seven pounds in there. Who do we have here? This is Shirley. Shirley is up next. Don't forget to leave all your comments in the, the questions in the comment section. And after we are done with Shirley, we're going to take some questions. Hi, Calvert Elementary students. We miss you too.
right, just like that, Shirley is all done. And Shirley's gonna get her pedicure next. Yes, Melissa, that is a black sheep. Hello to all of the third grade classes and all the students. If you wanna let us know from what school you're watching, if you wanna let us know what country, what state you're watching from. We are doing a sheep sharing event here. Again, this process does not hurt the sheep at all. It's essential care for them. It's done once a year. Good job. <laughs> nice name, yeah. We love Shirley. We love Shirley. Okay, Kirk, can you show us how you do the process? What tools do you use? This is a, the machine is a, a murder, Heininger, Swiss made, just a, a murder. This is a shaft, runs off electricity, of course, and then you just take your hand piece and you put it in the shaft when it's running. And of course, then it turns on. And what do you have in your hand here? What is this? This is called your hand piece. This is um, just tiny or made, but there's di numerous different companies. And uh, the whole machine is probably right around 1500 bucks. Oh my goodness. It's quite a bit. Yeah. So how long does it typically take you to shear one sheep? Four minutes. Uh, do you ever have a sheep that doesn't cooperate? Oh, yeah. Lots of them. Yeah. So your the style that you do is that you put them on their backs. Uh, on their rear, um, on their uh, rear end, and then you just go through your uh, movements. Would be like, they call this a New Zealand style of shearing a sheep. So are they more calm because you're putting them on their backs? More so, it's how you hold them. Okay. Your technique. And being able to you want your feet way underneath the sheep so they can't get back on their feet, which then you're gonna have to put them back down and then get stressed out. Do all the process. More work and everything. So when you're finished with all of the shearing, what do you do with the wool? I sell it to a wool company. Um, a lot of these black feet places, a lot of spinners like that to spin. Um, but I just sell it to a wool company. That's what I do. So you told us before that the, the first one from Spike, you thought weighed about five to seven pounds. Yeah, they're all probably about the same weight, five to seven pounds, yes. And you only get 20 cents per pound. The white wool is a little more desirable because this is, they can only keep this, you know, it's only going to be black. You can dye that whatever color you want. Okay. This wool here, if you didn't sell it to a spinner, probably about five cents a pound. Five cents a pound. It's unreal. My goodness. Now, good Western sheep. None of these sheep are from like out west. Colorado. That wool is a fine wool. This is medium grade wool on these sheep. The fine wool is worth a lot more money, like a dollar a pound. So there's that much of a difference. Big difference. What would you consider this type of sheep? These are all like a Cheviot cross. Is what they are. Shove it. Okay. And how many times a year do you have to shear a sheep? One time. Uh, and no why do you do it? Why do I do it? <laughs> <laughs> why are I'm you crazy. so? Because <laughs> you're crazy. Um, uh, why does a sheep need to be sheared? Lots of people think it's just because of, you know, they're going to get too hot. Uh, you can also think if this wool was an insulator. It's going to help to keep them cool a little bit. Mm. They know not to move around when it's super hot. They'll just lay in the shade. The main reason would be maybe cleanliness because of maybe flies could get in the wool. You could have maggots, you know, from the flies, lay eggs and maggots, which would, you know, become a major issue. For the health of for, the sheep. For the health of the sheep. Yeah. But it's not that the sheep's going to die because of the wool's on there. Okay, because so even if the summer months no, come and they have wool. Really, if it's super hot, they're going to be laying underneath that tree or inside the barn. You know what I mean? But 
normally in the spring of the year is when you shear sheep. I mean, that's what we, we've sheared sheep for years, and that's when we normally go. But uh, they know enough that, that they won't really be active if it's too hot. Right. So now that it's going to be colder for the next two days here, is that going to affect them too much now that they don't have their wool on? It could if you were turning these sheep. Okay, they did that. They had no um, protection or protection. You turned them right outside, and it started to go a real damp, cold rain. Like today? Yeah, <laughs> or snow. Okay. That could they could get sick. Okay. So your but, recommendation was to bring them into the barn, keep them somewhere. Or, yeah, and normally even if you let them go out, they're going to know enough to get back in there. You know what I mean? They know that it's too cold for them. Right. But, I mean, if you were just going to turn them out and they couldn't get in, not saying you're going to lose any, I'm just saying it's They could get sick. But this is, you know, that's just the weather this year. <laughs> Absolutely, that's what we're dealing with today. Um, is it true that sheep can get sunburnt if exactly. they don't have their wool? Yeah. If it was real hot, you had real direct, you know, direct sun, it was really a scorching day, you just sheared them. Mm -hmm. You turned them outside. They had no shade. Definitely. And that sunburn could create another issue because, you know, that couldn't get uh, their skin scabbed up and it didn't heal properly and then other issues. Definitely. So we need to shear them every year so that they're cleanly, but if they don't get sheared every year, how many years does it go until they're way there, too... There were a couple sheep over in New Zealand, Australia, I think that 30 kilos of wool or something was unreal. I mean, it was unreal, it was like a Guinness record. The sheep still survive, but it's really hard shearing that sheep. Was... Because that wool is continually pulling on that skin when you're trying to shear it. And now you're very easy to cut them. Even like two years of wool, you can cut them super easy because the wool is pulling down on the skin. Because you want to shear right on the skin. If you don't shear on the skin, you'll dull your blades out and everything. You want to shear right on the skin. So doing it every year is good for the shearer, yeah. good for the sheep. Yeah, definitely. And something that we can do every spring. Exactly. Keeps them good. Totally. All right. Well, what do you say? We share the rest? Um, no. Let's do it. Yep. All right, guys. We're going to share the other three that we have. I think we have Thelma, Louise, Laverne. Thelma, Louise. Hello to all of our students out there watching. I'm glad that you're here. We appreciate you logging on and we hope that you're enjoying it. And yes, as Dawn said, they eat grass and hay and they also get some grain. And of course the little lambs in there, they are still feeding from mom. Shout out to all those great mamas out there. And after we're done shearing these sheep, we're gonna go inside the barn so that you guys can see our baby goats. We've got 10 baby goats, they are precious. You see in the background, they're trying to get a hold of them right now. And here comes another one. This is Coco, everyone. Say hello to Coco. There we go.
right, Coco. Now it's time for Coco's pedicure. The ladies are quite loud. You can hear them back there. Why do they need to get their hoofs cleaned every year? Uh, they normally, I mean, I don't, you probably wouldn't have to if they're, if they're going to wear them off, you know, like on rocks or something. Mm -hmm. um, but sometimes they do get long. I, I normally don't trim them, you know, unless you have to. Okay. You know what I mean? Because they, normally they can get them. <laughs> um, pretty close to, with to good. Rocks and things. Yeah, yeah. That's perfect. All right, Coco is done. She's ready to go back in. Yep. Kirk, how many sheep do you shear every year? Uh, probably from, I think, 3,300 uh, to, I think last year maybe did 2,600. Wow. And you do it all over the United States or just the East no, Coast? No, no. Um, from New York to West Virginia, some New Jersey, Virginia, a little bit of Maryland. That's a lot. You, yeah. Your talents are needed. <laughs> Mike, will you come do the camera? And I'm going to do the GoPro. I'm trying to answer the comments. Just get up in there. Huh? Just, like, uh. get up in there. Question. How do you get a young sheep comfortable? Uh, Once you get them on their back, takes, they're pretty. <laughs> takes uh, you know lots of experience, and then trying to. A guy told me that you wouldn't be any good shearing sheep unless you shear with eyes. You know you gotta have lots of experience. You gotta keep your feet way underneath the sheep to get it so it doesn't move. Because if you can't hold the sheep, you can't shear. You know what I mean? That's half of it being able to hold it. So experience and holding the sheep firm. That's right, yeah. You can't be, you know, you want to be very, not really, just firm, not, you know, you don't want to be hard on them. Yeah. Yeah.
right, just like that. Got another one pedicure coming. So we had a question that I think that I answered correctly, but it usually takes one year until they're ready to be sheared. That's correct, yeah. That's okay, so you have to be a one year old. I mean, you don't have to. I mean, lots of people shear lambs. Why would you shear a lamb? Uh, they'll grow a lot faster. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they'll grow a lot faster. They'll uh, be cleaner. They'll put them on a lot more weight. I mean, which, they'll grow a lot faster. Right, of course. Yeah. You know, you don't want to shear them 50 pounds, but 70 pounders. Oh, yeah. 80, 90, 100. All right, so we have one more sheep left. And Mike is gonna wrangle her down. Good job, Mike. Denise, yeah, the bars almost sound like humans. Are sheep usually this loud? Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's better to shear them before they land. You can see they're always wanting their lambs. They do really like their babies. Yep. Yeah. Oh, look at her. She's good. And this one is Laverne. Laverne. Okay, Laverne is our last sheep for today. And then we're gonna go into the barn to see the goats. And if everybody could give a round of applause to Kirk while you're at it, show him some love in the comments. He's been doing a great job. He is a professional, but he is also a school teacher. All right, let's do this thing.
Laverne. Mm, probably five or six. Five, five or six, six, probably, yeah. I'm not sure. Five or six. Can you tell how old a sheep is just by looking at her? Uh, sometimes her nose length, you know, they get real hard on their nose. They're older, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, you can check their teeth and see how old they are. She's fine. I'll look at her here in one second. All right. Get confirmed how old. Close to it. She's, I'd say probably five or six. Five or six Nailed years. it. Yeah. We were right. There we go. All right, perfect. She's so pretty. All right. So there's our group. All of our. Freshly sheared and all of their babies. There they are. Any last minute questions for Kirk? I've got um, a question about your experience. How long have you been doing this? Oh my. 25 years. 25 years. And why did you start? I have no idea. <laughs> you have no idea. But you oh, raised. I've always had sheep and. Uh good way for people to make, make a little extra money and uh, the thing that I like about it not many people can do it right uh, you know in a proper manner and you know it's kind of you get accomplishment to see that you sheared however many sheep in a day yeah and, and that it's it's good for them too you're yeah, doing a service to the animals you, you know there's some exercise in there yeah. <laughs> that it does. Um, so we had some students from your class watching as oh. well. So um, I put in there that you're a middle school science teacher. So yeah. how do you juggle being a science teacher and shearing sheep? Has it been difficult? Well, they all know I shear sheep. They it's do. A small community, and uh, I think some of them think it's cool, or maybe yeah, not cool. I don't know, but they. Uh, we talk about some things about sheep sometimes in science class and how it relates to maybe biology and maybe some like uh, economics about how much money you can make off of them or something. Right. And do you live on a farm yourself? Do you have sheep yourself? We've had sheep and for quite a few years. My dad had sheep. My grandfather had sheep and we buy some land. And um, so one of the students is asking, do you need a lot of training or did you learn it just by yourself? Yeah. You can go to shearing school, get somebody that's good that would that would could help you. Oh and then, wow! Like I said, the the old guy told me he said you need to shear a thousand sheep to get any type of routine, how to hold the sheep, any type of pattern, because you want to get a, a pattern, a pattern. 
if you can't hold it properly, the mm. sheep's just going to get away and then you have to catch it again mm. and set it. And then if you can't hold it, then they start struggling. Mm. Then you get worked up and then anything in the world can happen. You know, bad things, cut it really bad. I mean, we all, we all right. cut it right. from time to time. Right. You don't want to, but you, you It's can't. just part of the job. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much. I uh, appreciate all that you've done for us here today. And we appreciate you driving all the long way. And I think all of your students really enjoyed watching him. I appreciate it. Yep. Watching you. All right. Yep. Let's walk into the barn and see some of our goats. Let's bring this guy with us. Yeah. Yeah. No. Okay. So we've got some time to see some of our babies. Uh, comment here if you want to see our baby goats. We've got 10 of them, so I'm sure you're going to want to see at least one or two of them. Uh, Mike, who we're going to see first? Uh, first, you're going to see Pip and Squeak. Pip and Squeak. So this was a huge battle between what we were going to name these, these little ones, but we kind of came out with a decision. We asked Facebook, and Facebook decided that Pip and Squeak were the names. How old are they? Uh, Pippa Squeak are about a week old now. They are so cute. And mom is Iris. And this is Mama Iris. Hi, Mama Iris. Look how adorable they are. These are pygmy goats. They're born here on our farm. When they're about three weeks to four weeks old, they go out to the pasture with everybody else and play around. But right now they're still in the barn. And then if you guys didn't know, we also do goat yoga classes in the summertime so everybody can enjoy them and play with them. All right, we'll go over here to Rocky and Rambo. My phone's gonna die. I know. Let's hope that doesn't happen. All right, guys, so while we're looking through the goats, my phone just told me it might die soon. So if we unexpectedly go off air, we'll be right back on. Just go back to the Amish Farm and Houses page and you'll find us back there live. Rambo. And this is Rambo. Rambo looks exactly like his mother. So this is Rambo. And then this is Raven. Are they not the same? How cute are they? And over here is Rocky. Say hello to the camera, Rocky. Hello. So this is Rocky and Rambo. And we'll go back. Oh, these guys over here, that's Cookie and Oreo. They're here inside the pen too, or our little mini pigs. And we're gonna go over here. Peggy here is gonna take us through the house tour in uh, just a few minutes. All right, over here. Let's see where they are. There's Arwen and Arwen's little babies. Let's see where they are. Oh, Gizmo and Gadget. Little babies there. Hiding underneath there. Inside of here is Tiny Tim. Tiny Tim is not so tiny anymore, but he was the smallest baby we had when uh, we had babies two years ago. Oh, and look who we have here. This is Marky. And this is Luke. And this is their mom, Julie. Cuties. And then Jackson and Leah are over here playing around. Look at them. Well, Leah's feeding and Jackson looks like he wants to play. So we created all of these little, um, what would you call them? Playgrounds basically for the baby goats because they need lots of activity. They love to jump up and down. So these guys are only two weeks old and they're already up and jumping around. They actually start to learn to walk in about five minutes and then they're up and jumping around by the end of the day. So we love our baby goats. Each one of them has a name. Each one of them is cared for dearly. 
That's the pigs, if you can hear that noise <laughs> over there. They want some food, that's what they're screaming for. We'll be sure to get them some snacks. So make sure that you just, you know, um, go back onto our page if you wanna see some cute videos of some baby goats. We always have videos posted. So now what we're gonna do is take you inside of our Amish house and show you a little bit more um, about Amish culture, some clothing, the schoolroom. And like I said before, if the video somehow just disconnects, that's because the video died, my phone died, but we'll be right back on afterwards. So it's raining here in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. You can see everything is very green and beautiful, but it's kind of a bad day out on the farm. All of our flowers are covered because there's supposed to be frost later tonight and very cold weather. So all of the flowers have been covered. Over there is our blacksmith shop, our tobacco shop. We have a 15 acre farm here. So we're gonna go inside here, inside of our farmhouse. We're gonna learn about the Amish. Thank you. So I'm here working with Peggy. Peggy is our group sales manager. And together, we're going to teach you about the Amish. Yeah, we're far enough away. All right, so everybody say hello to Peggy. Hello, everybody. This is the church room in the Amish farm and house, and this is the first room that you'll start your tour in when you come and visit us the next time. This is a typical of an Amish church room. They have church in their homes. There is no such thing as an Amish church, but they congregate together in their homes. They take turns. Families um, each get a turn when they welcome the whole district to their, home, to their farm on a Sunday morning. The service starts at 8.30 and it lasts about three and a half hours. And Did you hear that? Three and a half hours. And children are, uh, children participate as well. No staying home from church. Everybody goes together. And uh, this room w is interesting. Um, you'll notice at the windows that there are green pull down shades. That's typical of an Amish home. So that's a good way to tell that the house is Amish or not, no electricity in an Amish home, no televisions, no computers, no Game Boys, no video games. Mm. They spend their time together playing, playing uh, games and puzzles, and the family spends uh, their evenings together. The Amish put God first, community and family. That's really important. Here's a typical kitchen. Now, the Amish don't have electricity, but they'll have a refrigerator that runs on propane gas and a gas stove. So that makes it a little bit easier. We have a lovely antique um, stove here, but that, that isn't typical anymore. An Amish woman will have a gas stove. They eat everything, um, fresh food that they grow themselves, food, Amish food from roadside stands and everything is eaten fresh in the seasons. The Amish children go to school all together. They have their own schools, their one-room schoolhouses. They start in at about the age of five and they go until eighth grade. They have a great education of basic learning, like uh, the basic subjects of reading, writing, math, American history, Earth sciences, they learn German grammar, and they study in English. At the house, the Amish child will learn um, to speak their native dialect of Swiss, which is a dialect of Swiss German, but they learn English at school. And after eight years, they're completely bilingual. An Amish um, person here in Lancaster will talk to you as a visitor in English, but between themselves, they speak their own dialect. 
And what's over here in the corner? Why are there sewing machines over here? Ah, sewing machines, because Amish mothers will um, sew the family's clothes. Now, this is an old Singer sewing machine that runs on a pedal. But here's another example of a modern sewing machine that runs on a battery. I said that the Amish don't use electricity in their homes, but they have a lot of replacements for their energy. They use batteries, they use compressed air, they use solar panels, and um, this is a good example. You can see that the battery is um, attached to the sewing machine. So, Next thing we'll do is we're gonna go upstairs and see some examples of clothing. The Amish all um, do things, they all like to dress the same way. They, they have some um, requirements about how they wear their hair and how they dress. They believe that everybody is equal under the eyes of God and so they want to do um, many of the same things. Humility is a big pillar of their religion um, and uh, everybody wants to, wants to be the same because what's important is inside in their soul, not what they're wearing on, their, on the outside. So this is an example of what a little girl would wear to school, and this is an example of what a little girl would wear to church. And one of the most important things to learn about Amish girl clothing is the prayer cap that they wear. So an Amish girl always wears a prayer cap here in Lancaster County, and the shape of the prayer cap is always a heart. So if you're in any other community around the United States, their prayer caps will be different, but here in Lancaster County, they always look like a heart. Now this is my favorite dress because this is her wedding day dress. Look how fancy it is, right? <laughs> so after she gets married, she'll put this white cape and apron in a box underneath of her bed, and she'll keep it until the day that she dies. So that means the way that you can tell a single woman and a married woman is by the color of her dress on a Sunday. Ah. So all single women on a Sunday going to church will wear white. All married women going to church on a Sunday will wear black or a different color, but no white. Because that white cape and apron for a married woman is underneath of her bed waiting for her final day. But Jamie, how do you distinguish a married man Ooh, in the Amish community? I'm sure somebody in the comments knows that, and knows that difference. So a single man does not have a beard, but a married man will have a very big, full beard, but no mustache. You will never find any men here in Lancaster County wearing a mustache. So let's go, go over here and see what the men wear. Beautiful Amish quilts on the bed, which we sell in our gift shop here. We have an online store, so even during this um, terrible confinement of the COVID-19, you can still shop for quilts on the Amish Farm and House um, online store. So, Jamie, boys' clothes. Boys' clothes, so handsome. So this is what a boy would wear to school, and this is what a boy would wear to church. Now these hats on the bed is part of a Amish boy every day would wear a shirt or weddings or funerals, something more formal. He'd wear a black hat like you see here. And let's see, where's dad's clothing? Oh, here's a little bit more of dad's clothing. Uh, something that's really important in the Amish community is not books and eyes. The men's, so over here we have some books, some puzzles, like Peggy said before, they don't video inside of an Amish home, so instead they have fun together. One of the other toys that we have here in the boys' bedroom is this marble game. It's really fun. It's all Amish made, handmade. Well, watch out. Just like that. Yeah, yeah, just like that. Okay, so we hope that you guys are able to come to the Amish Farm and House someday soon. Come meet our animals, come walk around our farm. You can make it safe for everyone. And watching the sheep shearing event, we hope that you liked it. This video will be posted and we'll also be posting something on YouTube so that you can share it with all of your friends. So leave some comments and we will